What's up guys, I'm Ira Shell and this is Nuggets of Truth. We've gotten a few comments over the years about celebrating Christmas, and the majority of them say that Christmas is rooted in paganism. Now, if that's true, then we here at Hope to Hope want nothing to do with paganism. As Paul put it, what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will make my dwelling among them and walk among them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore go out from their midst and be separate from them, says the Lord, and touch no unclean thing. Then I will welcome you and I will be a father to you and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through 18. So with that said, let's dive right into this. There are three main names that are brought up when you talk about Christmas. Tammuz, Mithras, and Saturn. Tammuz is a Mesopotamian god of fertility. Within this cult, there are two main festivals. His marriage to Inanna, goddess of war and sexual love, and his death at the hands of demons from the netherworld. His marriage to Inanna was celebrated during the months of February and March. The festival of his death is actually recorded as being celebrated at different times depending on the time period and who was celebrating or mourning his death. For instance, in Assyria around the 7th century BC, they mourned his death during the months of June and July. But in earlier centuries, different cultures celebrated or mourned his death during the months of March and April. In fact, this feast was so large in Babylon that the exiles in Babylon during the time of Ezekiel were in celebration of this feast as well. It was such a large feast within the Israelite communities in exile that God showed it to Ezekiel as the second worst abomination of his time. Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 14. Then he brought me to the entrance of the north gate of the house of the Lord. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Ezekiel even gave us the date on which this took place. Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 1. In the sixth year, in the sixth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house with the elders of Judah sitting before me, the hand of the Lord God fell upon me there. This abomination took place at the entrance of the north gate of the house of the Lord on the fifth day of the sixth month. The sixth month of the Hebrew calendar is Elul. Elul takes place between our August and September months. This festival has never taken place during the month of December and has never been anywhere in connection to Christmas until recent years when people have tried to remove Christmas altogether and claim a random pagan holiday to replace it. The next commonly cited source of the pagan root of Christmas is Mithraism. Mithraism is the worship of Mithra, the Iranian god of the sun, justice, contract, and war in pre-Zoroastrian Iran. Mithra is the equivalent to the Roman god Mithras, who was prevalent in the Roman Empire during the 2nd and 3rd centuries AD. Though in the early 4th century, Mithraism rapidly declined after Emperor Constantine accepted Christianity. Mithraism is often spoken of by those who wish to find an alternate origin of Christianity that is rooted in dismantling the case for Christ. Within Mithraism, there has never been a time when the followers of the cult actually worshipped the birth of Mithra or Mithras on December 25th. There's no evidence to even link Mithraism to this date. The reason some link Mithraism to December 25th is because they are trying to argue that Christianity is based on Mithraism. The goal of these people is to cast doubt upon the authenticity of scripture and the birth of Christ as a whole. Second century writer Justin Martyr wrote, And when those who record the mysteries of Mithras say that he was begotten of a rock and called the place where those who believe in him are initiated a cave, do I not perceive here that the utterance of Daniel, that a stone without hands was cut out of a great mountain, has been imitated by them, and that they have attempted likewise to imitate the whole of Isaiah's words. The birth of Mithras apparently had nothing to do with a virgin birth or even with the birth of a baby boy. Instead, Mithras was born from a rock and not as a baby but as a youth. 
This, according to second century writer Justin Martyr, was an attempt to incorporate prophecies by Daniel and Isaiah in order to propagate a false religion. The persuasion of Mithraism's connection to December 25th comes from the implementation of a festival for the sun god Sol in the late 3rd century AD, which is over 200 years after the birth of Christ. The last name that is mentioned is always Saturn, the Roman god of sowing or seed and agriculture, equivalent to the Greek god Kronos. The Roman festival of Saturn is known as Saturnalia, which originally fell on December 17th and was a one-day feast. It wasn't until Domitian that Saturnalia was extended to fall on the day of December 25th. Why would Domitian do this? Domitian was the emperor of Rome from AD 81 to AD 96, who wasn't just anti the church, but according to John the Apostle of Christ, Domitian was the sixth man of lawlessness. Now, according to John, recording in Revelation chapter 17, verse 7 through 11, there are seven men of lawlessness in all, and the last one has yet to come and will only be for a short time. It's he, the seventh and final man of lawlessness, that will usher in the great tribulation. For more on the seven men of lawlessness, check out our two-part video series, The Seven Kings of Revelation 17, which are both under our The End Times category or playlist. So with that said, if Christ was truly born on December 25th and Domitian was a strong persecutor of the church, would it not stand to reason that he did this in order to overtake, remove, and replace the celebration of Christ? Now, some will say that there's no evidence for Jesus being born on December 25th. Wrong -o. The Bible gives us a very specific time of year when Mary conceived the promised Messiah in her womb. For an in-depth study, check out our video, Was Jesus Really Born on December 25th? Which is under our Too Deep category or playlist. Now the other problem many people have is that they get caught up in the fact that celebrating the birth of Christ isn't a defined feast in the scripture given by God. Here's the thing, there's no law against setting feasts as a remembrance for important events so that they may never be forgotten. For instance, it was never forbidden or condemned by God to celebrate the Feast of Purim, which was instituted by Mordecai while they were under Persian rule. In fact, if all scripture is God-breathed, as Paul assures us it is in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, then Purim would have never been included in scripture as the holiday or feast that Mordecai instituted and is recorded in Esther chapter 9. Matter of fact, Jesus himself was at the Temple of Solomon for a feast that wasn't set by God or even mentioned anywhere else in scripture according to John chapter 10 verse 22 through 23. Remembering, celebrating, and or commemorating important events isn't unbiblical, but taking part in paganism is not the same thing. When you take part in paganism, now you're mixing darkness with light so that that darkness doesn't seem so dark. There's a difference. Now, while you guys ponder all of these things, let's sum everything up real quick. Tammuz, the Mesopotamian god of fertility, had two major feasts, his marriage to the goddess Inanna and his death at the hands of demons from the netherworld. Neither of these feasts was in any way, shape, or form connected to December 25th. Instead, they took place in different months such as February, March, April, August, and September, depending on the time period in which the celebrations took place. Mithra, the Iranian god of the sun justice contract and war in pre-Zoroastrian Iran, was the forerunner for the Roman god Mithras. Within Mithraism, there is no connection to the birth of Mithras on December 25th. In fact, there isn't even a connection between the birth of Mithras and the birth of Christ. Jesus Christ was born of a virgin named Mary, whereas Mithras was born from a rock and is always depicted as a youth and never a baby. Saturn, the Roman god equivalent to the Greek god Kronos, had a feast called Saturnalia that took place on December 17th. This one-day feast was later lengthened to an entire week by Domitian, a Roman emperor who oppressed and persecuted Christians during his reign. This action would force the date of Saturnalia to fall on December 25th, the day that Christians celebrated and commemorated the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
There is absolutely no evidence anywhere in history that even hints at Christmas being rooted in paganism. If that were the case, why would the world be fighting so hard to remove Christmas from our vocabulary and replace Christ with Santa Claus, which came many centuries after the birth of Christ? The world never tries to silence things that will lead the elect, the church, the bride of Christ astray. Instead, it promotes and glorifies darkness just as it does with Halloween. For more on Halloween, check out our video, Can Christians Celebrate Halloween, which is under our Not For The Week Of Heart category or playlist. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. If you want to further grow your relationship with God and have a daily devotional sent directly to your phone or email, subscribe to our website, holdahope.org, or join our Telegram channel, Hold to Hope. And until next time, God bless.